All right, so now we're gonna talk about superheated vapors and compressed liquids. Superheated vapors are uh, vapors that are very, very uh, superheated. They're vapor. They, they are not about to come back to be a liquid. Um, they are, you know, 0.5. If we look, go back and look at that, um, the phase change diagram. Let's go back and look, let's see if we can look at the quality here. Yeah. Uh, superheated vapors are, are over here. You know, superheated vapors are, are somewhere up here. All right, how do we know if it is a superheated vapor? Maybe it'll tell you it's a superheated vapor, but it probably won't tell you it's a superheated vapor. Uh, we should start at the saturated tables. Start at the saturated tables, A4 or 5, A11 or 12, or 4 or 5, E or 11 or 12, E. Right, so start there, but uh, if the V that you are at is greater than the V of a saturated vapor, then it's superheated, all right? If U is greater than UG, then it's superheated, right? So go to that property table. You can see UF, you can see UG. Um, if your U is too large, then it is superheated, right? I think this kind of makes sense. H, if H is larger than H, of a uh, saturated vapor, then it is superheated. Here's a big one. If T is larger than the T sat, you know, for a given pressure. So if, if we are told uh, the pressure and the temperature, if we go to the pressure table and for a given pressure, if your temperature is larger than the temperature on the property table, then it is superheated. That all makes sense. Now, the one thing that does not sometimes make sense is pressure. If your pressure is too low, if your pressure is less than the saturated pressure for a given temperature, then it is superheated. So all those make sense except for pressure. Think about pressure. A very, very, very large pressure can pressurize something into a liquid, right? Large pressures can compress it into a liquid. So that's why it's kind of backwards. Everything else, if your numbers are too large, you know, if your numbers are larger than the saturated vapor numbers, then it is a superheated vapor, except for pressure. If pressure is lower than the saturation pressure, then it is a superheated vapor tables. And so if it is superheated, we go to tables A6 if we're water or A13. 6 if we're water, and A13 uh, if we are refrigerant. Let's go to those tables real quickly. Uh, let's see. So table A13. So this is how you would read it. If you know your pressure and you know your temperature, you know, th then these would be your values of V or U or H or S. Right? If you know your pressure and you know your temperature, then... Um, then um, you know, any of these would be your, your value. Okay, what if you know your pressure and you know your U, for instance? What if you know the pressure and you know the U? You went to table A12 um, and you saw that your U was too large. So then you go here. If you know your pressure, then you just come down here and figure out where your U, you know, fits. If my U was 300, then I, it would be in between those two. It would be in between these two. We would have to interpolate. Remember, go back and look at that interpolation um, video. Remind yourself about interpolation. All right, so in general, you're going to have two, two pieces of information. You know, the pressure and the temperature, or the pressure and the H, or the pressure and the U, the temperature and the V, something like that. Go to the, uh, go to the saturated table, and then look and see, okay, if, if I've got entropy, uh, is it in between these two? If it's in between those two, then it's a mixture. But if it is above the G value, then you head to table A13, and you try to find your S and figure out for that pressure where it lies. Sometimes you might have to figure out the pressure, so let's, let's talk about this. Let's say, uh, well, this would be, harder. Uh, but let's say you know the temperature 
uh, and you know the S, uh, you, you would need to look at all of these S's for the temperature of 60. Which one of these is 60? Look at all those S's and see which pressures it lies between. If it's between 1.12 and 1.11, then the pressure would be in between 0.24 and 0.28, right? You're going to have to interpolate probably for a lot of, of these superheated values. All right, so let's go back to our notes. Superheated, we have a superheated table, A6 or A13. Uh, if any of our values are larger than the, the va saturated vapor value on the saturated tables, then it is superheating that we'd flip over a page to A13, uh, except for pressure. If pressure is lower, then it is superheated. Okay, it might be a compressed liquid. I think you know this. Uh, if the V is less than the VF, if the U is less than the UF, is the, if the H is less than the HF, is the T is less than the T sat for a given pressure. Uh, and then pressure is backwards. If the P is greater than the P sat for a given temperature, then it would be uh, a compressed liquid. If it's a compressed liquid, we have a compressed liquid table for water. We don't have a compressed liquid table for refrigerant. All right, we don't have a compressed liquid table for refrigerant. So if there are no compressed liquid tables or you know your value is not on the compressed liquid table all right so if you're if you're looking at refrigerant then there there is no compressed liquid table for refrigerant um, sometimes if you're looking at water your um, value may not lie on the table so if, if there's no compressed liquid table for you to use then treat the compressed liquid as a saturated liquid at the given temperature, not at the given pressure, at the given temperature, because compressed liquids are most dependent on temperature for so, we would say that the V of my compressed liquid, of my compressed liquid, so I'll say subscript CL, is approximately equal to the VF at that temperature, not at that pressure, all right? The U of a compressed liquid is approximately equal to the U of a saturated liquid at that temperature. The H of a compressed liquid is approximately equal to the H of a saturated liquid at that temperature. Now, this last one, we do have this kind of correction. All right, so we could multiply it times the VF at temperature uh, times P minus P of saturation pressure. Uh, but we're going to neglect this. We're going to neglect for now. This generally is not going to be very large because that V is generally not very large. And also, if the, if the pressure is not much, much higher than the saturation pressure, then, you know... It, this term is probably very, very small, close to zero. We can neglect it um, for now. All right, so does that make sense? We, we would, if, we, if we wanted the S of a compressed liquid, we would just take the S of the saturated liquid from the saturation table, you know, A11, at that temperature, not at the pressure. Given temperature, not at the pressure. I can't emphasize this enough. At the temperature, not at the pressure. 